So I'm here with Don McLean, who's traveling the country, singing and promoting the new DVD release, uh, Time Life, Don McLean Troubadour. And explain to me what a troubadour is. Well, I think it's somebody that doesn't carry a lot of equipment, who rambles and uh, all over, and I ramble all over the world, but who also is, uh, you know, may write songs or sing songs uh, from all different genres, not really able to be pigeonholed. So I, I think that's what I, I am. That's what I do. And, and actually, the funny thing was, is the first job I ever had after I got out of college was as the, quote, Hudson River troubadour. And I was wandered through all the Hudson River towns, starting at uh, Lake Tier of the Clouds, uh, like 300 miles from New York City. And I sang in uh, in three little towns a day. I hitchhiked from town to town. and, and they, but, they, but they had a publicity manager, though, <laughs> who came out ahead and put up posters and stuff. And uh, I would sing in, in the town square or something. And, you know, there was a lot of interest in this and there was no interest in it and uh so i had this fellow who was the sort of the the road manager of uh me making sure that i got where i was supposed to get to and there would be sometimes he said there'd be nobody there you know he said well just start <laughs> singing in the middle i said i'm not singing to no one in the middle of the street you know i'm not demented and so we had some pretty big arguments and uh, they tried to fire me, but they brought other people in, other guys, you know, and they said, that's what he's been doing? I don't want to do this, you know. <laughs> but I actually thought it was quite interesting. This is interesting. called starting out in show business. It was quite it? interesting. Yeah. yeah, that was my start, yeah. really, because I got a, quite a bit of publicity. I was on the CBS News and the front of the Wall Street Journal. It sounds like the sort of thing Charles Corralt would attract you down. And What is that? It sounds like the sort of thing Charles Corralt would attract you down. And I, I'm not sure, but he may have actually yeah. talked to me. I, I, I don't think so, though. I think it was someone else from CBS. Yeah. The, the movie takes a stab at trying to, and I guess you do too, take a, a stab at trying to explain all those influences on you, the, the folk, the rock, the big band, the, you know, the saloon singers like Frank Sinatra. Where do you think it came up with, with all those influences having such an impact on you? Well, I don't have a very discriminating attitude toward music. I, I, if I like something, I like it. Um, and I had certain things that I just wanted to learn how to do. And uh, I wanted to play play 12-string guitar and five-string banjo and guitar like the people that I knew that could do that, or even better if I could. I practiced very hard at that. I wanted to sing like Elvis Presley or like Sinatra or like uh, Roy Orbison or like um, Marty Robbins. So I uh, learned how to sing in an almost semi-operatic way rather than in a yelling bluesy kind of way that is, is you know predominant um, and one thing I did was uh, um, read everything I could about uh, when an artist would write about you know what he had done because I was always interested in that and Sinatra wrote a uh, an article in um, I think it was at Life magazine when he retired the first time and it was called uh, Me and My Music. And uh, he talked about doing laps underwater and br building breath control. And yeah. I had remembered when I was on a swimming team um, that I had learned to swim almost 50 yards underwater by taking deep breaths and exhaling them, 25 or 10 of those every night through your nose and then out your mouth. Uh, you would have twice the amount of time underwater as before, energizing your lungs. Mm -hmm. So. I began to do that. Later on, I had a house with a swimming pool, and I used to swim in it and swim underwater. Because you, you, as a kid, you had lung problems. You, right. You were a sickly kid. Yeah, I had asthma, and that led to, um, often led to, uh, to pneumonia. I remember, you know, I would start off school well, but then those fall, you know, pollens and all that stuff, and before Christmas, I'd be laid out and home for a month and but fall behind. Mm -hmm. Then come back, and I didn't really fit in too well, and I have to struggle like crazy to get through. And then in the spring, it happened again, you know. And so, the, um, it could happen any time, depending on when these uh, these kinds of allergens were in the air. I was particularly susceptible at a young age, 
um, what happens is you out, they say you outgrow it, but what happens is your, your bronchial tubes reach more or less normal size uh, when you reach uh, your teens. So you get a little relief from this oh, constant uh, trouble that you have. But in that time, I fell in love with the records that were around the house. And um, Did you get that whole idea? for? I mean, you carry a melodic line a very long time before you take a breath. Is that a Sinatra influence? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I learned how to sing a very slow song yeah. and with breath control. And that song like Vincent or and many of the songs that I sing, which are slow, mm -hmm. um, empty chairs, things like that. Um, so I thought that was a wonderful fun, you know, to learn how to do that. Yeah. And uh, when it came time to singing a faster song, you know, it was a lot. It was a piece of cake, yeah. you know, it wasn't hard. I don't <clears> want to get a hold ahead of myself. So I'm holding up your second album here, but because in the second album, the lining, this is my 41-year-old copy of uh -huh. it. But you have a Hopalong Cassidy tribute on the inside right. and the sleeve. What is it with you and Hopalong Cassidy? Because clearly there's a connection. Um, I don't exactly know, but um, I loved him as a little boy, and it's part of that time at home, I think. And... Um, I wrote that poem in early night, late 1969 or so, and included it on the record, and that became a, a plaque, which is now in the hospital where he died, hmm. on the wall there. In um, I think it was in, in, in somewhere near Palm Springs or uh, Dana Point, where he had a house. Yeah, there's been some kind of a connection, and, and there is also a, a a book out now called American Troubadour, a coffee, coffee table book, which uh, you can find out about by going to my website, donmcclain.com or americanpie.com, and it was put together by the Cochran Brothers, and they are out in West Plains, Missouri, and you can go to russcochran.com and find out about it. But they did three other books, one on Les Paul, one on the great Chet Atkins, who was a, a friend of mine, and the other one on Hopalong Cassidy. And they got around to me, and they said, would you like to do the, the introduction to the book? And I said, I'd love to. Yeah. And after we finished and I got the book, I also read the book, and I said, well, you, there are some, several inaccuracies here. Uh, <laughs> this is what this is, and that is what that is, you know. And then they said, well, we'd like to do a book about you. So that's how actually that happened. And um, so... You know, I, I just feel he's some kind of a of a of a god of the fifties hmm. in my life as I was growing up. Um, more so, and the thing one of the things I loved about him was that he was a silent screen actor who uh, managed to become a modern actor in movies. Most of the cowboy stars couldn't act. You know, they were they could do a lot of other things and they looked beautiful on a horse, but. They really couldn't act. He was a wonderful actor and never overdid the eye thing and all the other stuff mm -hmm. that a lot of silent screen actors. So he adapted very quickly to sound and became a modern actor. Um, but all the kids were brought up on watching his movies and everything yeah. else. In the film, uh, you mention that a, a TV guide cover with mm -hmm. Elvis Presley on it mm -hmm. kind of changed your life when you were a kid. It did. Well... People, and I've said this <clears throat> repeatedly in these interviews that I've been doing because it's, I don't know if you've ever uh, had a, an experience which involved um, uh, the smell of flowers. Uh, sometimes a funeral is very powerful. If someone you love die and you go to this funeral, sometimes uh, flowers will affect you in a negative way. Sometimes the smell of, of, of a girl, you know, a beautiful girl that's around you when you're young, you know, that just changes you. Well, that's, that's what Elvis Presley was. Mm. And people forget that, that he had an aphrodisiac effect uh, in every respect on people who saw him, heard his music, and it made, it changed, it made people a little crazy. Yeah. And so just me seeing him, especially the early Elvis, the boy who you know came with his parents, you know, one under each arm. That's the one that that yeah. I liked, and uh, those are the songs I liked. You know, where he was in the studio, you could hear him breathing, you could hear him, uh, you know, hitting his head on the mic, whatever he did. <laughs> uh, and he would s sing a lot of bad songs, and then he'd just sing an, an amazing number one record. That was uh, 
he was always figuring things out and doing a lot of bad stuff before he did the uh, you know great thing. It was never neat, mm-hmm. very American, very very es- essentially rock and roll. You know, he was it was a big mess that that came together because he was a genius. And um, so I, I looked at that guitar and I thought, gee, you know, if I could play the guitar, I could, I could sing songs for people. Mm-hmm. You know, I could take it around and sing anywhere I wanted to. Or I could be in a group if I felt like it. So it became, uh, but I didn't have any faith in myself as, in terms of being able to learn this. Mm-hmm. I, I wasn't great at learning things. So I thought this is going to be really hard to do, you know. <laughs> That's always the hard part, isn't it? You have to learn how to do things before yeah. you can do them. Yeah. I mean, I always wanted to spin a rope. I never could do it. My son can juggle. I can't. Oh, I want to juggle. But I can play the guitar, and yeah. I, I I had an affinity for it. And uh, <clears throat> the great thing about guitar in those days is that the music that we liked, whether it was early rock and roll or folk music, was all three-chord music. Mm-hmm. And so if you learned an you know, E, A, B, seventh, you were on your way. You could play mm-hmm. everything. 